Okay, before we get started, a quick note about this video. This is an advanced topic, uh, modifying the Serial Wombat firmware, and is not necessary for most users of the Serial Wombat chip. It glosses over a lot of things like installation of the tools and things like that, and assumes that you've already got a pretty good grasp of the C language and that you can uh, go through the Serial Wombat firmware code to reverse engineer some of the things that maybe aren't super well documented. So that being said, here we go. Hello, it's Jonathan Broadwell, creator of the Serial Wombat Open Source Project and an embedded systems uh, subject matter expert available for hire through my company, Broadwell Consulting Incorporated, to help out with your embedded systems needs. Uh, generally speaking, the Serial Wombat chip, the 18AB, is ready to go right out of the box. Uh, but occasionally, you may want to modify the firmware to do something custom. After all, what's the use of having something be open source if you don't occasionally modify the firmware? So I got a request from a user that said, hey, I have three rotary encoders that I'm reading with the Serial Wombat chip, and that was working quite well, but he wanted to be able to see the sequence of changes on three different encoders. And the way that the firmware works, it's really designed only to give you the aggregate result, which usually is good enough if you're doing a user control interface or you know tracking the tracking a motor or something like that but this particular user had three different knobs that one knob affected the meaning of the others and so it was important that they be able to monitor the exact uh sequence in which the different knobs changed and that's not really something that's supported by the firmware it would be pretty easy to add but it's not something i would want to add because it's not necessarily something that fits well into a general use case uh, so that's a perfect reason to modify the firmware so we're going to take a look at how to do that so here are our requirements okay requirement number one we're going to require a queue to store the data in. So we're going to have the firmware create a queue in the user data area. Normally you do this using a serial wombat uh, protocol command, but we'll do it directly through the firmware. Secondly, we're going to monitor pins 14, 16, and 18. That's where the, uh, that's where the, the rotary encoders are going to be defined. We'll, we'll say that that's where we're putting them and the firmware every frame will look at the public data from those to see if they've changed. And third, we need to record any changes. So in order to make that work, we're going to say if any of those three pins change value, we will put a marker ABCD00XX uh, where X is the pin number followed by the new value that we, uh, that we created. So then whatever's on the other end of the Serial Wombat chip will be able to read the queue located at 0x0000 in user memory. And if there's any entries, then we know there's been a transition on the rotary encoder and we will catch them in order. So uh, there's a couple of different ways that you can get the code. Uh, if you're a big GitHub user, you can go ahead and make your own fork. Uh, if not, then you can go into the tags, Broadwell Consulting Inc. Serial Wombat, grab the latest tag and just say, I'm going to create a zip file. And we will put that onto our hard drive and say save. And once we're in here, we, we will right click that and, ex and say extract here. Now, at this point, you're going to want to open it with MPLAB X. And specifically, uh, there are versions that we use. So you're going to want to use uh, version 5.45. That's what I developed this on. May work fine with, with later versions, but uh, would recommend you use the same thing that I'm using. Obviously, I haven't tested it on all the different compiler versions and things like that. So we're going to go to Open Project. And we will go to the C drive, Serial Wombat firmware example. Then we'll start going down into this directory. Under Serial Wombat 18AB, uh, there's three different projects here. One is the main firmware, one is to build with a bootloader, and one is to build with Jump to App. Jump to App is what you should use if you're using a debugger, such as an uh, PitKit 3 or 4, ICD 4, uh, things like that. Uh, bootloader is what you would build if you want to create an integrated bootloader and app. And so we will open that up. 
and then we'll open up the other project that we need which is the firmware we're going to set the bootloader as our main application and so when we build this it will build both because and create a unified hex out of that so let's say build all You get a warning here about uh, FB Slim. I think that's a tool error on their part. It is proper. It has to do with the way the boot blocks are. Don't worry about that. So now we've gotten a successful uh, build. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is modify the firmware. The first thing I would recommend you do is go into Source Files Protocol and search for version. And this is where the Serial Wombat chip uh, advertises its version. These last three digits are the version number. I would recommend changing those to something that's not an official version. We'll call our version 999. You can call it something else, but starting with a nine is probably a good idea. Make these uh, numbers, not letters. And so we'll hit save on that. And now let's go uh, and take a look at the main. I did a whole video a while back on the firmware structure of the Serial Wombat 18AB. If you look up above, there's a link coming now that you can click on that gives a lot of background into how this thing works. But for now, what you need to know is that there is a main, that main does some initialization, then it goes into a while one loop. And inside of that one while one loop, this run foreground gets set once per millisecond by an interrupt. And so anything that we want to do prior to uh, execution of the main loop, we should do here. This is where we're going to put our queue initialization. And then stuff that we want to do periodically, uh, we will put inside of here. And so let's start by taking a look at the queue stuff. Uh, inside queue, and we'll look in the header file. Inside q.h, we can see the various initialization things that we can do. So we're going to do right now, the only support I have is for bite size queues. Uh, and so we will use that. We'll go into main and we'll say q initialize. And then if we go back and look at the h file, the address, and that's really an index into the user RAM area. We'll put that at zero. And we said we want 500 word size entries so that'll be a thousand regular entries so let's go back and build that and make sure it builds and i could hit this one instead of that one now we gotta wait a second okay so that built so now we know that when we get to the main loop we will have a queue initialized at index zero we know that we're going to have to keep track of uh the last values of pins 14 16 and 18. So I'm going to create some user variables up here in the global area. And those will be the things that we check. And so we'll come down here and under uh, pin registers, I believe it is, are the functions that we use to access uh, public data, a pins public buffer. It's get buffer returns a 16 bit value and set buffer. We're not going to use set buffer but we will use get buffer so first let's go ahead and only run this once per millisecond if what do we call it last pin 14 is not equal to get buffer for pin 14 then we need to do an update and so, and we'll duplicate that for pin 16 and 18. So if it's not equal, then we are going to go back to our queue information. And in queue.h, we can add a byte to a queue, queue add byte. And we always know the queue is going to be at the same address. And the byte that we want to add, we're going to do little endian format. So we'll add the 
small byte first, 0x, a, b, c, d, 0, 0, uh, 14 in hex is e, 0, 0, 0, e, q, add, byte, a, B, C, D, and that's the that's the marker we were going to use that says, okay, this is something new. Let's go ahead and add that to each of these. For 16, it would be 1, 0, and for 18, it would be 1, 2. Okay, and so then the other thing we want to add is 16, T, uh, value equals get buffer and this code could be a little bit better optimized but basically I'm just trying to make it really clear what it does uh, q add byte value and 0xff and we got to put in the address there and then the high byte And then we'll duplicate that for the other two pins. Okay, so I think that should do. Oh, and we got to update the last value. Last pin 14 equals value. And that'll stop it from running over and over again. 16 and 18. So, and we are going to compile this. And just for reference, if we go into this project, we can see the compiler I'm currently using. And I am using uh, XC16 version 170. I set, the, I set the optimization to level two, which is the highest you can get without paying a professional fee for the compiler. So you'll want to download XC17 version, XC16 version 1.70. So let's build it again. And I got a little warning here because this uh, this value is a little bit too big. That's fine. Uh, let's see. Then at this point, we've got a hex file. If we were using a, a pick kit for a pick kit three an ICD four, one of the debuggers, then we could program it directly into the chip. But we don't have that. Uh, I'm going to pretend like we don't have that capability. So now let's go and take a look at how to bootload it. If we go back into the zip file that we downloaded, you'll see the Serial Wombat 18AB post processing utility, and that is a C sharp application. So we're going to open that up in Visual Studio. Eventually, maybe I'll have Python versions of this or whatever that'll be more portable. But this is the this is my workflow for right now. And there's only so many hours in a day for an open source project. So I kind of go with what I know. And so if we go in here, we can see that it basically imports a hex file and outputs some other files. So I'm going to open up command prompt and go to CD firmware example. CD serial wombat v210, CD serial wombat post processing. CD in netcore app. And there's my exe. So I'm going to say serial wombat 18ab post processing.exe, and then I'm going to point it to the file that I want to post process. And if we take a look, under 18ab, we're going to go into bootloader because that's where it created the unified bootloader uh, 
the application hex file. We're going to go into dist, default, production, and we can see it. And double check what time it is. It's 3.45 on the 19th. And we do, in fact, have a hex file that's there. And so I'm going to hold down shift uh, and right click on the unified hex and say copy as path. Come over here and I will paste that and we'll run the post-processing utility on it. This will take just a minute. It's truncating the data to just what we want and then also creating a checksum, I'm sorry, CRC and a, uh, a checksum and a C file. And it calculated the CR, it's calculating a CRC and creating a run length encoded C file. So the next thing we're going to want to do is we can see that it created the CRC app.rle. I'm going to edit that with there. And so there's a couple of things you could do if you're in a UART mode, which is, I guess that's what we'll do here. We can download this hex directly with uh, the Wombat panel application. Uh, otherwise, you would take this array that exists in the C file and copy that array into the firmware download application that's part of the Arduino. And you could upload it that way using an Arduino with hide square C. But let's go ahead and use the CRC app. So right here, you can see I've got a Serial Wombat 18AB chip. It's actually a surface mount chip, something I'm experimenting with, but it's the same uh, PIC24FJ256GA702 microcontroller, just in a little bit different format. So this will work fine with your board as well. I've got it hooked up with an FTDI cable to my USB and have the red jumper in place, which puts the chip into UART mode. So now I'm going to run the Wombat panel application. And there's a link up above that shows how to get that and run that. I'm going to open my port. So let's go to port. Open serial. COM25 is where my FTDI adapter is. We're going to wait a second. It'll interrogate the chip. And bingo, it found a version 2.10. Now we're going to go up to tools and we're going to say download new hex file. And in order to do that, we're going to go to C colon slash serial wombat firmware example. And then go down into that 18 bootloader. Dist default production. And then we have this uh, CRC app dot hex. And that's what we're going to download. That's what we created with that utility. Entering bootload. Okay, so now it's erasing. This will take a couple of minutes. I'm going to speed it up for the purpose of this video. Okay, so that completed. So now let's uh, go and we will hook up the rotary encoders and play with those a little bit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to port, close. And I'm going to power cycle the Serial Wombat chip real quick, just to make sure that we have a that we got out of boot mode. I'm going to go to port, open Serial, 25, and that will re-inquire as to the version of the Serial Wombat chip. And if things went well, we should see version 999, because that's what we changed the version string to. Go up a little bit version 999. So that's very good. Okay, let's hook up those rotary encoders. Okay, we've got our rotary encoders hooked up. We're just using the ground and the two uh, signal pins off of these. The feeding into pins uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, 19, and each one is grounded. These particular boards also have their own internal pull-up resistors and power and all that. We're not going to use that. We'll just use the Serial Wombat chips internal. So let's right-click on pin 14 and go to Quadrature encoder. Second pin is 15. Pull up. Uh, high to low pole. That all seems good. Configure and then say auto sample on that. Oh, and I got to turn the right knob. And we can see when we turn this, we get transitions.
and I'm only getting one on every other uh, transition. So let's go to pull both. Okay, so that's working perfectly. And we'll configure 16 and 17 that way. That's reading correctly. And that one is working correctly. So if things were working right, we would then have in memory and do I have a, a thing to read cues yet? I don't think I do. Okay. So there should be stuff up oh, here. Q. Okay. We'll say initialize on zero. We can say read all. It cleared it because I initialized it. If we click this, So we get Q and then we're going to have to reinitialize this uh, ourselves. So we wanted a thousand, which I forget is what that is in hex. It doesn't matter exactly. So let's actually, I think I could put a thousand in there. Can I initialize? Couldn't parse length. So we'll make it a thousand twenty-four just to make life easy. Okay. So now we've got that length in there. And what should be happening is as it goes through, it's, monitoring these guys. If I click this a couple of times, we can see that we got the, we're seeing CD and 12, which is the uh, pin number 18, which is what we want. I forgot we chopped off the ABCD. So the, the AB, we're just getting the CD and 12 since it's a 16 bit value. I was thinking 32. But anyway, so we've got a marker CD 12 that represents the, the that particular rotary encoder. And if I hit read all again, there's no more. If I turn it one to the right, now it's at 8011. Turn it one more, 8012. If I turn it backwards, it clicked twice there. Uh, so we saw we got the 8011 and then it went to 8010. And so now let's see what happens. If we click, I'll click one rotary to the right, I'll click one rotary to the left and one rotary to the left and we'll say read all and we we got the cd12 indicates pin 18 cd10 indicates pin 16 and cdoe indicates pin 14. so we got the sequences we captured all of those and stored them in the order that they happened and is available for recall on the host so we proved with the serial wombat panel that that worked so now let's switch over and write a quick Arduino script that will leverage this. We're going to use uh, include SerialWombat.h. We're going to instantiate a Serial Wombat chip. We're going to instantiate a queue so that we can access that queue. And we're going to configure three pins along with their helper pins to be uh, quadrature encoders. So under setup, we're going to start I squared C. We're going to start serial so we can print out the results. We're going to tell it there's a serial wombat chip on I squared C address 6B. Remember, we pulled the jumper off to get it out of UART mode and power cycled it. Uh, we're going to tell it there is a Q at zero that is a thousand bytes long. And we're going to say initiate uh, three quadrature encoders on pins 1415, pin 1617, and pin 1819. The default parameters for these for debouncing, uh, capturing both transitions and all that are perfect. Then we're going to go into a loop and in that loop we're going to read the quadrature encoders uh, queue and then we're going to delay and i made this delay kind of goofy it's 13 milliseconds 
plus some random amount up to 250 milliseconds. So we're going to be running this function uh, highly asynchronously, you know, at weird times. And it should still work well because we're counting on the Serial Wombat chip to capture and queue any transitions. And then we can grab them at our leisure. We're just going to print them out, but a real application then could act on them. And I broke that out into a separate function. So it was clear that this could be put into your loop and treated asynchronously. So we're going to come in here. We're going to read data out of queue. It returns a negative one if there's nothing to read. And so we'll just leave. Otherwise, uh, we'll get all four in there. We know based on the way that we architected the system, if we get the first one, there should be four more uh, because it, it writes them all at once and we can't process the, uh, the communications code that reads them out over the I squared C uh, except once per millisecond. So we know that all four bytes will get queued uh, what looks like aton uh, atomically on the serial wombat chip side. So we'll validate the input. We know the first byte has to be pin 14, 16, or 18. We know the second byte has that 0x CD magic marker. And the we have to get data of some sort for the two position bytes. Then at that point, just for interest, let's print them out in hex so that we can see the results, see how they match up with that serial wombat panel application output. And then we'll we'll translate them into actual human code saying what pin moved to what location. So let's take a look and play with the knobs. So let's go into our serial monitor here. There we go. And we got a little initialization code. That's fine. I'm going to right click. 18, it moves down and up, down and up, down and up, 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 down, 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 down. Rolls over back to 65, 535. We'll do the same thing. We can see pin 16, 18, and we can see that we're getting slow reads here because when I, when I rotate it a bunch of times, we're actually only reading out once per run through this loop. And uh, so if I go click, 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 that's much faster than the main loop can run. But we can see again, okay, we're actually capturing every single transition so that if we went back and read these slowly, we could tell what rotary encoder was at any given position uh, based on uh, the queue of events that happened. And since we queue all three of them, we see their positions relative to each other. That was, as far as I understand it, the requirement and the need of the particular user who asked me the question. Uh, now, I, I can't go through and generate custom firmware for everybody. That's not the point. But hearing that one user's need, I thought, okay, that might make an interesting video for you guys to see. This is how you get started modifying your Serial Wombat firmware code. So, uh, if you have any questions about this, uh, please put them in the comments below. I'd rather have you put them in the comments so that everybody can benefit from the answers as opposed to email. That's all I have for today. Everybody have fun, keep making stuff, and congratulations for making it all the way to the end of this rather advanced video. I'll see you next time. The Serial Wombat firmware is available on GitHub and is constantly being updated. Subscribe below so that you can see the latest features and videos that come out as we fix bugs and add new features. The Serial Wombat open source project was created by Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IEC 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485 as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting. Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Also, feel free to leave your question in the comments below.